Greetings to all of you. My dear sisters and brothers, and my dear friends, a warm welcome from your Pastor Yeti. I will follow you, O God, embracing him as Lord in your private worship. Today, in his sight and company, come with me and enjoy the presence of God in your life and the pressure, the precious, I mean the precious words given to you to think about your own personal life, about your relationship with God and give him the worship in everything that you're doing because you belong to him. The omnipresence of God means that we are never out of his presence and his all-seeing eye. And I hope you never think that when you know that he is always there and he knows everything that there is no commitment between you and the Father. This is the most in-depth relationship you can ever have in life. Intimacy with Jesus Christ. Knowing that you are a child adopted in the godly family. So we can hide from one another or hide our activities from each other. But never from God. Are you with me? As Proverbs 15.3 says, the eyes of the Lord are everywhere, keeping watch on the wicked and the good. A God-fearing person, remember fearing, it's kind of an obedience, it's really true, obedience and following what Jesus is teaching us. The way he walked his life. Showing God respect. A God-fearing person is continually aware that wherever he or she goes, God is there. Such a consciousness of God's presence should obviously affect our conduct. Living becomes an awesome business when you realize that you spend every moment of your life in the sight and company of an omniscient, omnipresent creator. My goodness, I'm so grateful. I am so in love with my God. Which of us isn't guilty sometimes of disregarding God's constant presence? Be honest. If you ever slow down to the speed limit at the sight of a highway patrol car, you were driving without the conscious presence of God. Looks stupid, eh? but it is. I'm talking to Christians and those who are not very much interested in God. I'm talking to you too. Life is serious. Life is given to you. And you have a responsibility for your own life, but also to others. God, not the state trooper, should be our highway patrolman. Because God is always with us. A God-fearing person should be the same at all times, knowing we live every moment of our lives in His presence. We need to establish the habit, though, of constantly being aware of this fact. David was keenly aware of God's constant presence. You know, when I sit and when I rise, He acknowledged that. 
You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Psalm 139, verses 2 to 3. The God who created the universe and keeps the stars in their courses takes note of every move we make. He just not, you know, he's not sitting on a throne and is a bookkeeper, keep everything up, what we do or not do, or guilt or not guilty. No, that's not our God. He observes our slightest sideward glance and hears our every whispered word. The person who follows God in godly fear, who properly relate to him with all reverence, honor, and worship, will be conscious that God is aware of every minute detail. Every mundane activity in his or her life. Such awareness serves as a check on temptation to sin. This doesn't mean living in constant fear that God is going to get us. You hear me? It does not mean that because we are aware of his all-seeing eye and all-hearing ear, We live in a way that pleases him as he sees what we do and hears what we say. Paul's instructions to slaves in Colossians 3, 22-25 says, was to obey whether or not they were under the eye of their master. The reality is that God is present whether the master is there or not. Applying this principle to today's working world, we see that the Christian is always to work, not just to win his or her employer's favor, but as if working for the Lord and under his watchful eye. This means we don't steal time. For example, in extra long coffee or lunch breaks, or do shoddy works because no supervisor is there to observe us. It means that we accurately reports business expenses because it is God. Not just the controller's department who audits our reports. In the same manner, Paul's instructions to masters to provide their slaves with what is right and fair was based on the fact that masters also have a master capitalized M, Master in Heaven, Colossians 4, verse 1. God was watching over their statement of slaves with his all-seeing eye. The truth, then, is that every interaction we have with another person is performed in the presence of God. In Leviticus 19, verse 14, is a rather intriguing warning regarding physically disabled people. Do not curse the deaf or put a stumble block in front of the blind, but fear your God. I am the Lord. I can't imagine the necessity for such a warning in the respectful Jewish culture. But obviously God knew it was needed. In our society today, I can imagine some mischievous and immature teenagers gleefully cursing or insulting a deaf person or even deliberately setting up an obstacle for a blind person to stumble over. In both cases, the biblical warning is couched in terms of the fear of God. The deaf person can't hear himself being cursed, but God hears. The blind person can see neither the stumbling block nor whoever put it in his way, 
but God sees. Undoubtedly, in this context, the most prominent aspect of the fear of God is an actual fear of His retributive justice. Implied in all these instructions and warnings is an underlying principle of integrity. We should never take advance of anyone, the poor, the disabled, the buyer or seller, our employer or employees. Rather, in all our affairs of life and our interactions with other people, we should always be conscious of His all-pervasive presence. His all-seeing eye and His all-hearing ear. This is where integrity actually begins. Living all of life in the conscious awareness of God's constant presence. Are there recurring events or activities in your life in which you need to make a special effort to practice the awareness of His presence as a restraint against temptation? Pray with me. Mighty God, my Master in Heaven, I thank you that your loving eyes never leave me, that I will never spend every moment, I mean that I will spend every moment of this day and every day in your sight and in your company. Wherever I go, Whatever move I make, I can always know what David knew. You are there. You are there. At this moment, loving God, the eyes of my heart are on you. Knowing that yours are on me. I celebrate your perfect knowledge of me. I rejoice that I can never escape your spirit or utter in your presence, even if I tried. I praise you that today your guidance and power are available to help me, please you in everything I do and say, and in my every interaction with other people. I praise you for your own perfect integrity, and I thank you, for your promise to guide me in integrity. As I remember your all-pervasive strength, your all-seeing eye, and your all-hearing ear. May integrity and uprightness protect me, because my hope is in you. Before you, O oh God, I acknowledge that by my own insight and reasoning, I am utterly powerless to accept or even understand the truth of your continuing presence, or indeed to comprehend any of your truth. I depend totally on yours, on your enlightenment and teaching through the gifts of your spirit, and for these I ask. Teach me your way, O oh Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. I pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you and protect you. The Lord deal kindly and graciously with you. The Lord bestow his favor upon you and grant 
you peace. What can you ask more? Let God love you and let your love, let your life love God. Blessings to all of you, my dear ones. This is your pastor, Yeti. Bye.